This is the good old IBM AT that I got new old stock almost four years ago. And it's kind of crazy to think it's almost been four years already since that. And I still don't regret buying it even for $500 because it's kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity to own a machine that's older than me and be its first owner at the same time. So that's kind of interesting. Also at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if there are people on eBay paying $500 for beat up old junkie machines that still somehow work. So that's pretty cool anyway. Today I'm going to attempt to quote unquote upgrade the sound card in this thing. It has a Sound Blaster 2.0, but I'm going to put the CMS chips in there and make it so I can run some CMS games, or games that support CMS, as little as there are. At this point I think there's only one game on this computer that will support CMS from a Sound Blaster. All the rest of the games on here that support CMS require an actual CMS card due to their weird auto-detect functions. So there's only going to be one sample of the game at the end when we get it working. But, that's good enough for now. It gives me more uh, room to play around with games and stuff, so... So for a little br brief history on the CMS, uh, it was Kratos' first uh, audio card for PCs. The Sound Blaster cards retained backwards compatibility up through the Sound Blaster 2.0. The first Sound Blaster had all the hardware required for CMS sound, so it could do both Sound Blaster and CMS sound on the same card. After that was the uh, Sound Blaster 1.5, which had all the hardware except for the Philips SAA 1099 chips that made the square wave sounds, and then the Sound Blaster 2.0, which is what I have, was missing both the synthesis chips and the logic IC required to switch between CMS and FM synth. So in order to make a Sound Blaster 2.0 play CMS sound, you would need an upgrade kit from Creative, and only a few cards had that. It was also cheaper just to get a Sound Blaster 1.0 or, or upgrade a Sound Blaster 1.5 since the uh, synthesis chips were easy to come by. Around 2011, I think, someone reverse engineered the Logic IC that switched between the sound outputs and then uploaded the file to program a gal to Vogons. This version only worked with a few models uh, of Sound Blaster 2.0 cards. Later in 2019, somebody found an incompatible card with the official upgrade chips that worked, and those were reverse engineered. So now I think any model of the Sound Blaster 2.0 can be upgraded pretty cheaply. And regarding the uh, 2019 version of that program for the GAL chip, there was a little bit of a drama between a couple people on Vogons. If you want to watch uh, Necroware's video on that, it's a little bit interesting. This is a little kit I picked up off of eBay that includes the synthesis chip and a pre-programmed GAL. I think I got this about a year and a half ago, but I didn't really get around to it until today. So of course the first thing to do is to take the top off the computer, and it always impresses me how absolutely fucking beefy this thing is inside. Just look at it. The hardware hasn't really changed inside here since the last time I did a video on this, so I think first we got this IBM disk card here, we got the I.O. card, we got the memory board, which is actually an IBM board to get 640k of memory. We got a network card, we got the uh, Sound Blaster 2.0, which I'm going to upgrade, and a video card. Also, it's probably a good practice every time you open up one of these things to check the original CMOS battery to make sure it's not leaking anything, and it's looking pretty good. And here is the specimen we'll be upgrading. As you can see, there are a couple open sockets here for the upgrade chips. So yeah. Now here we are in the garage, and there's really only one way this can go in. And, uh, let's see here. These two chips are going to be the same size. These are the, uh, Synthesis chips, I suppose, and then this one's the uh, the gal with the programming on it, telling the card how to use it. And uh, you can see there's two of the same sockets right here, one big socket right there, and there's basically only one way this can go. Uh, just make sure you match up the notch with the notch on the socket. So you can see that there. Kind of, maybe. There's a notch right here, and there's a notch on the chip right here. And you got to make that line up. You just stick it in there. Make sure all the pins are pretty much lined up. Push it in, there you have one installed chip. <clears throat> I just gotta do it with the, uh, the Phillips chips here. Oop. And now this card has been upgraded to run CMS sound. Now all that's left is to uh, find the drivers and stuff. Now you should not be like me, and you should actually do research on this sort of stuff, because if you do not uh, open this jumper right here which says CMS off, it will cause everything to stop working except for digital sound, so your FM will stop working. So I put this in my computer the first time and basically nothing worked, so 
Let's fix that real quick. So there is a TSR that you will need. You can find it on Vogons. I renamed it uh, CMS on here. And while I was doing some research, I also found that some games require the adlibsound.com to make work. So here's a little, little sample of that. It's a bubble bobble. That kind of sounds like shit. And I think I'd have to agree too. The only game I have on here that supports CMS is Oilsville. Give it a listen. I think it sounds pretty dang sweet. It kind of reminds me of old arcade and old console games. Now one interesting thing I've read about the old Sound Blaster 1.0 cards is that you could actually use the digital sound, the FM synth, and the uh, CMS sounds all at the same time. So I think I think the uh, OPL2 has about eight sounds or eight voices, and then each of these has about six on them, or each one of the Philips chips has six sounds. So that's like what the heck is that, like 20 voices you could possibly have on a Sound Blaster 1.0? This thing is like a freaking beast and nobody ever actually did anything with it. When used at all, like just the FM synth on the Sound Blaster was very, very much underutilized. Most of the games from the time just sound like shit, which is pretty disappointing. Now that I've been spoiled with my PC-9821, it makes me believe that the, the uh, FM sound synthesis in the US was very, very pathetic which is kind of sad for this hardware. It's capable of much more than what most games will give you. So yeah, that's the CMS upgrade for Sound Blaster 2.0s. I think CMS can sound pretty dang cool. It's like a NES on crack in a way, but uh, there are only a few games that support it and fewer games that sound good with it. There's a lot of games that are kind of half-assed with it. Either that or have completely broken support from it, at least from what I've read. I only, I've only played one game with it so far, obviously. It's also kind of unfortunate that these Taito titles do not support uh, Sound Blaster based CMS because they have the auto detect that will throw a fit if they do not detect an actual CMS card. I kind of wanted to try Kicks out with it. But yeah, if you have a Sound Blaster 2.0 laying around, I'd definitely recommend getting this upgrade just to play around with and uh, hear it in person. It's pretty, pretty neat sounding. <laughs> 